Good to be in the house of the Lord today. Thankful that you're here. Thankful that we're here. Praise God. We have, Amanda and I have received uh, refreshing in the Lord this past week on that whirlwind trip it felt like, but we're thankful God brought us home safely through a couple flights yesterday and a, a screaming child that wasn't ours. Those aren't ever your favorites, are, is it? But uh, we're thankful that God brought us here. Won't you stand with us and let's invite the presence of the Lord. Uh, make us aware anyways of his presence here today. God, we love you. Lord, we're thankful for you. God, we're thankful, Lord, that you do all things well. And God, we believe that you have ordained this service. You have placed us here. God, to hear from you this morning. Lord, I pray that you would minister, God, to each one that is uh, listening or, or in here this morning. God, I pray. Lord, that your name would be exalted in our worship, that our uh, my preaching this morning, if you go that way, Lord, be pleasing to you. Let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable unto thee, O God. Break up fallow ground. Lord, I plead the blood. Lord, not just for a sinner that might come into the house, but I plead the blood over each one of us that are here this morning. God, I pray that you would move in a mighty way, and God will not fail to give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. That he's coming back. He's coming back again. Let the lost be found and the dead be raised. In the here and now, let love invade. Let the church live loud. Our God will say, We believe. We believe. We believ
crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. That he's coming back. He's coming back again. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. That he's given us to life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. That he's coming back. He's coming back again. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. That he's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. That he's coming back. He's coming back again. I had the privilege of lifting my hands and worshiping you. I love being in your presence. I love living in your mercy. I 
raise your hands and worship the Lord this morning. Lord, you're worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. When your presence hovers in this place, God, there is truly fullness of joy in your presence. God, thank you for peace that only comes from your presence in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. You're faithful, Lord. Love you, Jesus. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy. The presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can feel the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. For surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can feel the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. For surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Thank you, Lord. Make us aware of your presence, Lord. God, if there's someone in here who's cold, Lord, on you, God, if they've not been in your presence for a while, they don't understand, Lord, they don't feel. God, I pray, God, that you'll get through that cold exterior. Warm them up by your spirit, God. Saturate them in your, in your presence, God. Let them know, God, that you are in this place. And, God, they can leave different than what they came in. God, we believe you. We're thankful for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't let your agenda today get in the way of what God wants to do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise God for his presence. Praise God for his presence. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Keep your mind on the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are faithful, Lord. You are faithful. Praise God. Oh, oh, that we would sense his presence in a real way. God, would you do that for us today? Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's not just for revival. Oh, but we need his presence for survival. Oh, God, every service, every service, Lord, be tangible in this place. God, let us be able to feel you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hungry for you, God. Hungry for you, Lord. More of him this morning. Good to see you in the house of the Lord, but more important than you being here, he's here. He's here. Thank God. Good to see Brother Brandon and his voice here. God bless you. Good to see your faces here this morning. Thankful. Thankful. Brother Roy, it's good to have you back, man. We've been praying for you. God bless you. I'm thankful God has moved in his body and touched him. And we're believing for a complete healing where he'll never get it again. No more bronchitis ever again in the name of Jesus. God's able. God's able to heal him. Thank you, Jesus. Seems like he battles that from year to year. And we're believing God for a complete miracle. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord. I would tell you everything that God did for us this week, but I feel like it'd be impossible. I feel like it'd be impossible. I saw men of God and women of God that I have so much respect in and for and place so much uh, trust in them. They came 
uh, to that meeting for pastors, the empowerment experience. And he, uh, I, I don't know how that church did it. We're going to write them thank you cards and really express to them or try to express to them what that did for us. Um, but as I told you last Sunday morning, um, I am learning that I need to prioritize um, my spiritual health um, and my physical health. And, um, and God, God has, has uh, really just been speaking to me. I preached, I believe it was in July, on two anointings and one authority, on Saul's anointing and on David's anointing. Um, and then I preached, uh, that, was, that was two sermons. And then I preached a couple weeks later in the middle of August. I preached on another anointing um, and, and talked how the anointing in those three messages talked how the anointing flows down, downward, um, as the psalmist wrote, uh, as the anointing flowed from from the, the head of Aaron, flowed through his beard to his skirt. So, too, in a church does the anointing flow downward. Um, and and so I am realizing and longing for. Uh, a special touch from God um, on my life. That sounds selfish as a pastor, but I understand uh, what God is doing. And I saw how Brother Snow had organized that meeting um, where pastors, except for him and his pastoral team and those he had asked to speak, um, did not do anything in a service. Um, they just soaked it in. And, um, and uh, I tell you what, I tell you what, God is faithful. God is faithful. He spoke clearly and succinctly to me, um, and I'm thankful. Me and Mandy got to be together without kids for the first time in a long time. I think we laughed more um, those four days. Um, even when we were, it was just us two. We laughed more. Say, was it like a honeymoon? Well, we got a, we got a hotel room with two queen beds, and we each had our own bed. It was awesome. I said, we're officially uh, Ricky and Lucy Ricardo, babe. This is awesome. I can sleep and snore and toss and turn and not bother her. It was wonderful. We rested and didn't get much sleep, but I come back rested. And I'm thankful in my spirit. So grateful for God. So grateful for his goodness. Um, maybe throughout the next coming weeks, um, this will come out what God's done in our lives during that week. But um, I won't take the time to do that this morning. It's 1220 right now, according to that clock up there. So uh, we're, we're, we won't preach past one on that clock, okay? Maybe on your clock, too. Who knows? But I do want to say thank you for your patience with us. Um, we are leaving Wednesday. It's our Lord willing, our last trip of the year, uh, unless he deems different, um, to preach in Seneca, Missouri. And we're praying that God will help us at their, at their impact revival, uh, that God will, will uh, give us a sure word and a sure burden and a uh, soaking, dripping, wet anointing um, that we can un, uh, minister to where he is. Next Sunday morning, Brother, Brother Billy Ladner will be here ministering. I felt him on my heart. The last time he came, uh, he had a word for our church. A sure word when you're at wit's end. What do you do when you're at wit's end? And uh, he spoke to our church. And you all might not know it, but he directly in that message, he, he spoke to f at least five families directly in that message while he was here ministering. And he didn't know any of it. I don't talk to him uh, very often at all, and I for sure don't share secrets of the church. But he spoke to five families in one message with a clear word for what they were going through that's incredible so don't miss next sunday remember service this thursday night god will help praise the lord grab your bibles turn to second samuel chapter number five. Second samuel chapter number chapter number five lord being our helper i want to say thank you to linda for watching our babies uh, she had two children for a reason and, uh, and she watched our babies, and we have five. And we had five children for a different reason, praise the Lord. But she has been the best, and we're thankful for her and Brother Mike sacrificing a week 
um, for our spiritual health. And she needs a week of vacation, Brother Mike, to get over what she just went through. All right? So you keep that in mind. Me and Mando will try to help. We got a, we got a little something in our ear that we want to do for him. But anyways, uh, you help for her this morning that her sanity will return and that her blood pressure will subside. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Second Samuel chapter number five. And we're going to read verse number three. And you think, Pastor, you preached on that two weeks ago or three weeks ago. What? No, it's been longer than that. Lord, help us this this summer. So it's a, a month ago. But uh, I want to preach on what comes after the anointing, what comes after the anointing. And as I read that this morning, you could take that in two different ways. The events that take place after the anointing or the thing that comes after your anointing. The thing that comes after your anointing. Second Samuel five and three. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron and King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. Praise God. Praise God. Skip to 17 with me of that same chapter. But when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines came up to seek David. And David heard of it and went down to the hold. The Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Wilt thou deliver them into mine hand? And the Lord said unto David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thine hand. And David came to Baal Perazim, and David smote them there and said, The Lord hath broken forth upon mine enemies before me as the breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of that place Baal Perazim. And there they left their images, and David and his men burned them, and the Philistines came up yet again and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, Thou shalt not go up, but fetch a compass behind them, and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. And let it be, when thou hearest the sound of a going in the top of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt bestir thyself. For then shall the Lord go out before thee, to smite the host of the Philistines. And David did so as the Lord had commanded him and smote the Philistines from Geba until thou come to Gezer. Praise God for his word. You don't have to turn here this morning, but listen to this verse in Psalm 9210. The man that preached Friday night, Brother Brian McDonald, McDonald he preached this. But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Praise God for fresh oil. I, I, again, I want to preach what comes after the anointing. Lord, I pray that you will move in this service in a special way. God, begin or rather continue what you began in Sunday school this morning. Lord, I pray that you will preach to hearts, Lord. God, that we will take what we hear and we will heed the instruction that comes from your word. God, help us to humble ourselves and to submit our will to yours. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God for his word. Jesus said, quoting Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Uh, he has anointed me. Jesus walked 33 and a half years in the anointing of the Lord. He walked in it every day. Now, I know we hear about his three and a half years of ministry, but there was a, a still a God man that was when he was the size of Salem, he was still the God man. 
You understand? He walked in the anointing. How many of you believe that we need the anointing of God? We need the anointing of God. I want it. Not just the hour and 15 minutes that I'm behind this pulpit every week. I need the anointing of God on my off day, on my work days. I need the anointing of God when we run errands, when we go hither and thither, when we're in airports, babe, and when we're in hotels. I need the anointing of God. It's not just, Noah, will you come up here and shut these Monitors off, they're distracting me, Bubba. I'm sorry. But we need the anointing of God. How, how many, there, there, there are so many scriptures, rather, in the New Testament about the anointing. I want to read a few to you. It says in 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, For all the promises of God, Brother Brandon, in Him are yea, and in Him, Amen. Unto the glory of God for His glory. Brother Brandon, you said it. For, uh, for His glory by us. Now He which established, man, I feel like preaching. Lord, help us. He which establishes us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God. Who hath anointed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. 2 Corinthians 12 and 4. Now there are device, diversity, rather, of gifts, but the same Spirit. He lists the gift of the Spirit, and then he says this to the church at Corinth. Verse 11. But all these worketh that one and the self-same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will what was he saying in chapter 12 he's saying there's an anointing that can rest on you and he will gift you with the gifts of the spirit he will as he will first john 2 and 27 but the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you that means in you i want you to put your hand on your stomach or your sternum right now and say that anointing abideth in me. Say it with me. That anointing abideth in me. I believe it. Ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you all things. And his truth is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him you say what is the anointing jeremy it is the supernatural empowering by god to accomplish the will of god for the glory of god let me read that again it is the supernatural empowering by god to accomplish the will of God for the glory of God. Hallelujah. We need the anointing. We need it. David was anointed three times. First among his brethren in secret. Brother Brandon read about it this morning during Sunday school. It was in secret by Samuel at God's direction. Second, David was anointed as king by Judah. Uh, 2 Samuel 2, 4 tells us about that. But then in what we read, a very first verse in our text, he is anointed thirdly as king over all Israel there in Hebron. And he, it became the, the city of David there. He was anointed three times. And the psalmist spoke to us in Psalm 92. It's called the Sabbath Psalm. They would read or sing it. We don't know really. They probably sang it. Every, that whole Psalm 92, every Sabbath, they would meet together and they would re read or sing this psalm and they would worship God. And, and, and really, he says, My horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn or in the original, a strong ox is what it says. But then it goes on to say, I shall be anointed fresh oil. They came to church, if you'll allow me to say it this way, every Sunday, every Saturday night, Friday night, and this Saturday, whatever. But they came into church and they sang, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Now, 
Uh, I'm not going to preach what Brother McDonald preached Friday night. I think I could preach for 50 years and never come up with a message like that was uh, Friday night. I encourage you, each of you, to find that on Facebook Live and listen, and listen to it. But he spoke about the third anointing. He spoke how David was brought to this place by God and how he needed it. But then he trailed off somewhere that, that I'm not going to go this morning. I want to talk about what comes after the anointing. See, we need the anointing of God to be new and afresh in our lives every day. Every day. F.B. Meyer said this, each morning, bid your hands, ye priests of the Most High, for the fresh anointing for the new ministries that await you. The former grace and strength will not suffice. Old texts must be rejuvenated and reminted. Old vows must be respoken. Huh? The infilling of the Holy Ghost must be as vivid and may be as definite as at the first. Huh? Those promises that God gave you, unless you get a fresh anointing, you're not going to be able to believe them when they don't come to fruition as soon as you wish they would. But there is something that happens when you keep your anointing up to date. Charles Haddon Spurgeon said this, sometimes when we meet with believers who are full of grace, full of patience, full of courage, full of zeal, full of love, we say, I could never get to where they are. But yes, we can. For we shall be anointed with fresh oil. If we obtain fresh grace, there is no place of eminence that we cannot reach in Christ. There is a brand new pot of oil for you every morning. Yes, his mercies are new every morning. I heard a man say God's bakery is brand new every morning. You ever smell fresh bread cooking? Our brother Billy gave us an old, uh, uh, not an old, a uh, 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 new to us, a used to him bread maker. It's got a little short in the court, so once we get it started we just all back away and pray the house don't burn down. But we smell that beautiful bread. Uh, smoke, or uh, not smoking, now you got me on those burn ends, Brother Scott. We smell that wafting in the air, that aroma that is glorious. Oh, love it takes me back to my childhood my dad was so cheap he made mom make us our, our bread from scratch so he'd buy a barrel of flour and we'd cook and every every few days we'd have the smell of fresh bread in our kitchen oh it's wonderful that fresh that fresh smell I don't want to ever go anywhere and smell something stale I never smelled I haven't smelled anything stale that I thought man that's all have you you ever break your gym shoes out in high school out of the locker in the gym room in the, in the off of the gym and you think my god what happened in here somebody died it's a stale smell it's a stale stink right we don't want that in our spiritual life we want fresh oil in our lives you see, what happens is if you let oil sit around long enough, the flies congregate and settle in on it. They get stuck in there and they drown. And before long, what once was precious is now putrid. But in our lives, we need something from God to touch us that is fresh. We need the anointing of God in our lives. But then... When you get a fresh anointing, y'all. How is it hotter in here than it was in town? Once that fresh anointing, y'all, ignore sweat stains on my shirt, all right? I get self-conscious about it. If I talk about it, maybe I won't be. What happens after you get that fresh anointing, that fresh touch? Every time, what happens is, what happened to David what <laughs> Lord help us. It happens today. See, there is a response. And here's where many of us fell. And I this this is not this is was on got on me during service. What happens to many of us when we get that fresh touch, revival, spirit comes in, we're worshiping God, and it almost without fail. I've only been in one church. 
during one of the revivals where the revival stayed, that revival spirit stayed for a sustained amount of time. One church in the last 18 years of ministry, just one. It was Brother Anthony Lester came through at Broadway and he preached. We saw 33 saved that week. And for, until we left, there was a spirit of revival. And it carried on after we left. Tw 13 months, 14 months, it carried on. People getting saved, people getting help. And you know what? It can happen here. It can happen here because Brother Brody, as he said, didn't bring the anointing and didn't bring revival in his briefcase. I'll let you in on a secret. He's too young to own a briefcase. He didn't even have one. He brought a backpack. So that throws you on your ear, doesn't it? He, he came, but we were expecting a move from God. And that's what happened. When we get our faith where it needs to be, God always meets us at our faith. God help us to have a fresh anointing that lasts through the attack of the enemy. The response of the enemy to a fresh anointing. The Bible said in verse number 17 of our text, all the Philistines, all, of, all under different leaders, all of them gathered together when they heard that David was anointed king in Hebron, all of them gathered together. You see, the enemy responds to your fresh anointing with purpose. There seems to be a unity that gathers in the wicked realm and says they got a fresh touch and we've got to stop what they have. There's been so many since revival in our church, sickness. There's been so many that have been fighting other things even since revival ended last Sunday. But hey, can I tell you, that's what the enemy does best. He tries to squelch the anointing of God. He responds with purpose, the enemy does. Then he responds with presentation. Verse 18, the Philistines also came and spread themselves. You hear that? spread themselves old generals would do that they fought man to man like that. the Roman the Roman infantry the Roman infantry would display themselves in their groups and they would be so organized and so under authority that they would line up in the valley or in the plain where they were going to fight and those on the other side often would surrender before the fight was ever uh, engaged. Why? Because the presentation of the enemy said, we can't take that. See, the enemy comes against you with the fresh anointing. My God, help us. He comes against you and he says, hey, look how strong I am. Hey, do you recognize? You ever see? I, I imagine and I've seen it as a youth pastor. The fresh anointing comes. There's kids baptized in the Holy Ghost at camp. Some of our worst kids, I'll say it that way because they ain't here. Some of our worst kids would get a touch from God and I'd say, oh, thank you, Jesus. It's going to be easier now. But then when we got uh, uh, two weeks out of camp, they were starting drama that about split the whole youth group into half. Why does that happen? Because there's a display of strength by the enemy. He gets the weak ones and he says, how can we tear this thing down? I want to tell you whatever's coming into your own mind, whatever's fighting that fresh touch, don't allow it. Don't allow it. See, what happens if we focus on the enemy, if we focus on the enemy, we see, oh, that big old, big old thing in front of us, and it decreases our faith. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. How can we magnify and begin God? How can we do that made up word? How can we do that? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We can't make him something that he's not. So how can we do it? What does that mean? It means we fi fix our focus on him. We, in our mind's eye, allow him to be as big as he really is. Because when we focus on the presentation of the enemy, when we focus on the mountain instead of the mountain mover, we see that, 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 that our faith decreases and the, the problem increases. But, but that is just a response of the enemy to be loud, 
to make a big noise. What is it called? Saber rattling? Saber rattling. You hear that sound? Thirdly, the, the response of the enemy, he responds with persistence. David defeats him once in, his, in our text. This isn't over years. This is in our text here over a, a few weeks span. He, he defeats him once. Then in verse number 30, or 22 rather, the Philistines came up yet again and spread themselves again. The enemy responds with persistence in your life. Comes against you, the devil, your flesh. That uh, comes against you. I'm not saying the devil is your flesh. I'm saying those are your two foes. Okay? You're your own enemy in the spiritual realm. All right? They come against you with persistence. With persistence. Against you and try to defeat you. See, after David's first anointing, he was sent back to the pasture. And there... And this is me reading between the lines, all right? And so I give that disclaimer right here. This isn't the word of God solely. This is my opinion. But I imagine he had a fight with self. You think of this. The man of God, and it wasn't no dainty little bottle like this. He comes in with that big horn of oil, and he comes and he pours it out after he skipped all seven of your brothers. Pours it out on you. And we heard some awesome teaching this week on that anointing, a Friday night, but but he goes through all that, and then he has to go out still smelling of the oil into the pasture. Sheep all around him. Parent, his dad didn't even call him in. There's so much there that I preached before, but we won't go into it. But I imagine he had a fight with self. He was anointed for the palace, and here he was in the pasture. He was anointed for the palace. He was anointed to lead armies, and here he was fighting a lion and a bear. Still smelling like oil. Still having that memory in his mind. I'm anointed to be a general, a commander in chief of a nation. And I'm fighting to save these 300 sheep from a lion and a bear. And I ain't even got good implements to fight them. I got my hand, a knife, and a, and a, a, a sling. Thank you. I got it. I got That's all I got. How many people just helped me right there? That made me feel good. Y'all are for me. They, you know, it, all he had, but, but God, rather David, preserved his anointing by doing what he knew to do. He preserved his anointing. Da uh, Saul was anointed too. And it was taken away from him. It was rent from him. He was anointed. And it, it was God's will that he but his actions caused him to lose the anointing. After David's second anointing, you read it today. Read through. Just do a Google, Google search and, and ask Google, my best friend. Ask him. Say, hey, uh, David's three anointings. And I'm sure it'll pop up. The second anointing, he's anointed uh, by Israel. Or, or Judah, rather. And, and they anoint him. And the verses right under that, in my Schofield Reference Bible, my favorite study Bible on the planet, right under that, that division, it says, ish bo I got to read it because I'll say it wrong. I'll say it wrong anyways. ish bo Sheth was made king of Israel. Saul's progeny there. Uh, he, he was made king right after David was anointed. What, what did that mean? That meant that he was still going to have a fight with the house of Saul. His third anointing, what we read about, immediately after the Philistines attacked. When you, when you fr feel that fresh touch from God, I just want to talk to y'all this morning. Because it's been true in my life, and I believe it's been true in every one of your lives. When you feel that fresh touch of God, the enemy might give you a few moments of reprieve. Let you enjoy it. But before long, there's an attack that comes. And the whole attack is to wash that oil out of your life. That whole attack is to destroy your faith in God and to steal what God has done in your life. David's response to the noise of the enemy. I got to know what time it is for real. I can't stand it. Okay. David's response 
to the noise of the enemy. Here's how we respond after that fresh touch and that fresh attack. There's a fresh anointing, a fresh attack. Here's how we respond to it. First, verse number 17, when he heard that the Philistines were come against him, the Bible says he went down to the hold. That is not an action of a lack of faith. That is not that place. Several chapters before, David went into the hold and got help from the hold. I preached that message before. Uh, he, he went and got uh, alone where he could from God. He did not isolate himself from others, but he isolated himself with God. And he said, God, I've got to hear from you. Here's my anointing. It's finally coming to pass. I'm finally king of Israel. But here I find myself at the pinnacle of my life, what I've lived the last 14 to 16 years from the first anointing for, and now I've received what I've hoped for, what I've longed for, what you placed in my life. I didn't ask for this, God. And here I am facing a new battle. Let me tell you, David did what it took to keep the anointing through his whole life. Doesn't mean he was perfect, but he stayed where God, see, he had faith in God. That's when you go to God and don't try to fix it yourself. This isn't David's first time in the hold. The hold for David was a place of safety, surety, where he seek the Lord. He sought after God. Secondly, verse number 19, it says he inquired of the Lord. He had fellowship with God. Fellowship with God. See, relationship with God to break through in your life. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about relationship here this morning. That's the difference in Christianity. Yes, it is a religion, and it is a pure religion, undefiled, right? We visit uh, the widows and the orphans, minister to their needs. We minister to the needs of others. It is a pure religion and undefiled. But the difference in our religion is that we have relationship with the God over the religion. You understand? There is a relationship that you can walk in every day. Every day. The, the Bible says as the, and I quote this all the time, forgive me, don't get sick of the Bible, I guess. But as the heart panteth for the water brooks, so panteth my soul for thee, O God. Hey, I'm desperate for you. That wasn't talking about a deer that was thirsty. That was talking about a deer that was pursued and the way they would hide from those pursuers, those dogs and different uh, lions and things is they would get into the brooks and wash the sin off of themselves. They would go down till it was deep enough and they would lay in the brooks and let their little brown nose come up above the water and they would breathe and the pursuers would pass them by. David was saying, God, the only way I can make it is with you. The only way you're going to make it as a Christian is if you walk in the anointing of God. We've got to have breakthrough. Y'all hear me? We've got to have breakthrough in the individual level before we'll experience it in a church level. Individual, you need breakthrough. You need it in your life. I need it in my life. He said, and I'll, I'll flip back over there, but he said, the Lord hath broken forth upon mine enemies before me. That's verse number 20. And he called the name of that place Bel Perry. And really, God of the breakthrough. God of the breakthrough. He called that place God of the breakthrough. He was, every time he that place, he would say, that's where God broke through for us. That's where God broke through. And let me show you, this isn't a, it's a good one. It, it, said, it said in verse number 21 that the Philistines images and David and his men burned them. You know what that meant? The breakthrough broke generational curses. Breakthrough broke generational curses. I didn't get that from a book. I got that from heaven. Hey, you want breakthrough for your family? If you see, my God, my family, I've got alcoholics all the way through. My dad's dad, uh, I 
that for a time he was an alcoholic. My mother's father, he was an alcoholic and, a, and abusive. My, my, uh, all through my family, abusive alcoholics. I'm Indian and Irish. We get it honest, all right? It was all through both sides of the family. But there is something that happened when my grandma uh, Pinson, my granny Pinson, got a hold of God for herself and got filled with the Holy Ghost. There was a breakthrough that happened. Her husband got saved at 66. Her son got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost at 8 and used in the gifts by the time he was 9 years old. What happened? The God of the breakthrough showed up. The God of the breakthrough showed up. You hear me? You hear me? You, it ain't enough to get touched. Revival, camp meeting. To get a fresh touch. And then the very first time something comes against your life or your family, you lose all hope. You know what you lose with the hope? The anointing. Walking in deadness and dryness. That ain't what God, that isn't what God wants for your family. You don't have to walk in discouragement. You don't have to walk in that. Have faith in God and fellowship with him. If you're, I feel this. If you're battling with something, a secret sin, a secret besetting, let me tell you something. There is fellowship that you can have with God where it will break that on your life that power that that thing has over you you can get to a God where it breaks off of you and you no longer have to battle it anymore we've tried too long to medicate things we tried too long to seven steps to a better you there are some things that only the anointing of God can do and when he does it he doesn't break the yoke brother Scott like you said a couple weeks ago he destroys it it won't come back in Jesus name my God we tell you Hallelujah. You have said in your heart, this time will be like every time. You have said in your heart that this will go the way that it went before. But I, the Lord, say I can start a new thing in your life. I can take you to a new place, saith God. Today you can walk in victory if you will yield to me. Your will is not going to get you where I need you to go, saith God. But yield yourself unto me, and I will lead you to where I will take you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
David heard from God. Amanda, come to the piano. Come to the piano quickly. David heard from God. He heard from God when he had faith in God and fellowship with him. And when they rose to fight him again, when they rose to fight him again, David, the Bible says, and this is, I said all that to say, <laughs> this is what happened when they came against him and they did the exact same thing that they did before. Listen to me here. They did the exact same thing. It was the same enemy revealed themselves in the same way. The Philistines spread themselves out again. Huh? The exact same thing. So what did David do? I'll, I'll just take care of them like I did last time. No, that's not what he done. What did he do? David went back to the Lord. Brother Brandon said this in the negative this morning. The familiarity that Samuel had because he anointed Saul. But here's what I want to tell you. That David had familiarity with God. He had familiarity with God. He knew God's voice. When God spoke to him, he knew it was God. And he listened to him. The Bible says in 23, that David inquired again of the Lord. This wasn't a new enemy, but he didn't go on yesterday's word. He got a new word for an old enemy. You know what I felt like telling somebody this morning? You've been trying to defeat that old thing that you once had victory over. You've been trying to defeat it the old way, but God's speaking to you in a new way, and you're afraid to follow it. But can I tell you that the God of heaven wants to get a hold of you in such a way that this there is new breakthrough in your life. God, help us this morning. We cannot rely ritualistic religion to defeat, to defeat relevant foes. Ruts in our spiritual life can lead to ruin. Some of y'all been reading the Bible. For 30 years, praise God for it, by the way. I commend that. But here's the thing. We can get in such a rut in our Bible reading that we hear nothing new from God. We can get in such a rut in our spiritual experience that God never does anything new in our life. God wants to do a new thing. I'm not talking about something crazy. We're not blowing smoke up here and, and, and waving flags. I'm not talking about that mess. I'm talking about God dealing with your heart, asking you to do something you've never done before, but in your selfish pride, you're refusing to follow what God is telling you to do. No, God, this, this can't be God. He asked me this a long time ago, and, and that's what I've got to do. Some of y'all... We've got, we've got to get help today. Not tomorrow. Not when you get home. So nobody will know you had to pray through this morning. Today. Right now. We need to yield our will to God. Familiarity with God. He went to him again. In five. Notice what he did when he got cold on God. Um, the sin of Bathsheba killing Uriah. He, he got cold on God. He knew what his job was, what his anointing was for. It was to lead the armies of Israel. That's why that what his anointing, really his public anointing started with, but even his private anointing led him to defeat a lion and a bear. It was an anointing to war. It was anointing to take ground so Solomon wouldn't have to. And what did he do? He, he got cold on God and he got lethargic and said, I'm just going to, I'm just going to do what I've been doing this past season. See, it was a new season. But, but he had just got through vacation season. And it, it was the time of year when kings go to war. Came and he said, no, I'm just going to sit in the same season. I'm comfortable here. My God, that just came. That, my Lord. They're, they're, we've got to get past our comfort level in the spiritual realm. That's why so many people fight so hard to keep their church the same. I don't, I don't want new things happening here. They, they, they shroud it with spirituality. But I'm telling you, sometimes God, for God to do a new thing, we've got to 
do new things. There, there is something we have got to get this morning. I'm, I'm beating a dead horse. Stand with me if you will. God, help us to respond to the fight of the enemy. How David responded. He kept that anointing in his life. And he kept getting fresh anointings. Hallelujah. You see, this led in verse number 25. The Bible says that David smote the Philistines. He beat them. He beat them. The next chapter talks about the ark of God. Home. David's personal victory place led to public victory for his nation. The ark came home. Get victory in your private life. God will give you public victory. Get victory over that anointing that keeps fleeing and flittering away. And because of every hardship that comes against you. God wants to bring the ark home. God, I pray that you'll move in this uh, altar service this morning. Lord, I pray, God, that by your spirit, you will give us an unction, Lord, to hear from heaven. God, and God, what you ask us to do, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Won't you find a place to pray? Get a stance of victory in your prayer life this morning. I ask you, if you've been going through the same motions in the altar, won't you do a new thing today? Stand in a new place. Lift your hands in a new way. But God wants to speak to you in a relevant way to defeat a relevant enemy.
now.